Wars on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I am telling you about an upcoming card game about which I am extremely excited. We're talking about Keyforge. Now, if you've been enjoying the regular Transformers TCG content on this channel lately, don't worry. That will be continuing. There's many, 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 many more Transformers TCG videos to come. If you're hoping I start doing the Dragon Ball Super ones regularly again, great news. That's going to happen this week as well. We're just adding in other cool games like Keyforge because that's what this channel's going to do. So, Keyforge, what is it then? Well, it's a new card game. I keep wanting to call it Trading Card Game or collectible card game, which isn't necessarily the best description. It's created by Richard Garfield, who many of you may know as somewhat of a legend in the gaming community. He created Magic the Gathering, which basically means he created TCGs, although also credited for Netrunner and the Star Wars TCG, for which I really hope I've just shown you the correct logo. But here's what's awesome and cool and weird about Keyforge. There are no booster packs and no deck building component. What you do is you buy a deck and that is your deck. Every deck is unique and you cannot change. You buy a deck, you play that deck. If you want to play a new deck... You buy a new deck, and then you've got two decks from which to choose, but you cannot swap cards between them. You buy a deck, that's your deck. Apparently, there are 104 quadrillion different possible decks, although I don't think each of these decks will be printed. The idea of this game is that it's not about building up a collection of cards and deck building and all of that. It is about figuring out the best way to play your deck, learning and being comfortable with the interactions of cards in your deck and actually playing. It is about playing skill and learning your deck inside and out and the interactions rather than building your deck. Now, there are so many questions about Keyforge and hopefully all these will be answered as we get closer to the release date, which ironically is another question we don't have an answer to at the moment. Not a definite answer anyway. And one of my big questions here is, well, have they just made like a couple hundred cars and they're just being chucked in? Because, well, in theory, that would be kind of less exciting because then you might have some decks that are significantly better than others. Or are people sitting down and individually designing each deck that's being made, in which case they're probably going to be way more balanced, but that also means they're more likely to double up, and that's a huge amount of work. So it seems like there's going to be some random element here. Well, there's clearly going to be a random element. Now, there's good and bad things about this. Good news is, I mean, if you go somewhere like Chaos Cards, and you know that's my preferred card store, you can buy a Keyforge deck for like eight quid. And then that's it. You've now got everything that you need to play Keyforge at the highest level. You buy one deck and the RRP in the USA is $10. You pay $10 and that's everything you need. Now, you know I'm a big fan of the Pokemon trading card game. You know I'm a big fan of the Transformers trading card game. And you know I'm a big fan of the Dragon Ball Super trading card game where you could pay literally hundreds of dollars for a deck. And then after you've played your deck for a couple of weeks, you might want to make a new deck. Well, some cards can be transferred, some can't. That's a lot of money. Then, of course, a new expansion gets revealed, and then you're like, well, gosh darn it, that means that I now need to go and buy a new deck, and that's a more several hundreds of dollars, and that's not great. But you can literally be competitive in Keyforge for $10. Bad news is, as I've said, what happens if some decks are better than others? We don't know exactly how these decks are made. Whether there's an algorithm being followed, it's completely random, etc. Does this mean that some people are going to get an unfair advantage because they happen to buy a Keyforge deck, which is just inherently better than other people? Will people end up buying hundreds of decks looking for that one great deck? Clearly, I don't think this is a huge concern. Because the people designing this game probably would have come up with this problem at the first ever design meeting. And they'll be putting things in place to stop this happening. It's not something I'm worried about. If I was, I probably wouldn't be interested in playing the game. But it's certainly something about which I am curious. The one thing I really love about this, other than the fact you can be competitive for a tenner, is the fact that you can just buy some decks. 
and then you could buy three or four decks and your mates could sit and play. And if you're like, oh man, I'm enjoying playing with these decks, but I'd like a bit more variety, go spend like 20 bucks and get two more decks and then carry on again. I am interested to see how different each deck actually is. Don't worry, I'll buy a bunch of decks, we'll test them on the channel, and it will be nice and easy. I'll show you a bunch of different decks, and we'll have some gameplay, and it will be awesome. Now, it's all built around a fiction which genuinely interests me. Now, obviously, you can go to the official website where you can read a bunch more about it, but a general idea of the fiction is that there's a planet called the Crucible, which is an artificial world made of pieces of planets. These were built for Archons, godlike beings who don't really know much about their own origin, and the general theory here is that you're trying to unlock hidden vaults to gain ultimate knowledge and power. I want this to be a game where over the next five to ten years, I'm learning more about this world and this fiction as more and more sets are released. Given that it's designed by the dude who designed Magic, I feel like this is something I can rely on. That's awesome. Now, it seems to be, and as always, do correct me in the comment section if you think I've misinterpreted this, but it looks like the first set, Call of the Archons, is only going to feature three of the seven great houses. So there are seven great houses, read factions, in the game, and in the first set, we're only going to have Sanctum, Angelic Crusaders, Brobnar, Brawlers, and Mars, aliens, traditional aliens with ray guns and flying saucers and all of that. And I really like the basic mechanics of the game. Now, I'm going to bring you a how to play in the next couple of days. But at its very, very basic point, what you need to do is reap ember, fight, and forge keys to unlock vaults. If you have six ember at the beginning of your turn, you can forge a key. Forge three keys, win the game. But if you spend all your time forging, your opponent can just build up an army and crush you. And if you spend all your time fighting, you're not building up Ember. So you need to kind of try and find that mix there, which sounds really, really fun to me. And in your deck, you're going to have three houses, and you can only use one house per turn which sounds kind of fun to me, and it means that there's no cost of these cards. You can play anything from your designated house per turn, but you can only use one house per turn. This all sounds supremely interesting to me. As with any card game, we're not going to really know until we've got the cards in our hands, until we're actually playing it. We don't know how fun the game's going to be. We don't know how different each of these decks is really going to be, but... As I keep saying, we've got one of the best minds in card games making this, so I'm really not worried about the answers to any of these questions. I'm excited about this game, because it sounds interesting, it sounds like the kind of thing that could be one of the best games ever, or a complete disaster, but then you look at the dude behind it and you're like, I think it's probably going to tend towards the former. Now, the other thing that makes me really happy is there is going to be a companion app, which is going to go live at the game's release. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to play on the app yet. Certainly, there's nothing on the website which says you're going to be able to play on the app. I'm hoping that that's going to be something you're able to do. I'm hoping you'll be able to essentially scan your deck, and then your deck will arrive in the app, and then you can play over the internet. What it says is you'll be able to record and track each of your unique Archon decks. So clearly there will be a way to scan your decks and record which ones you've got. Find tournaments. There's going to be organized play. More on that in a moment. And watch the meta at large. Now the meta refers to the kind of decks that are doing well and the kind of decks that are seeing play. I'm very interested to see how this will work. Because we can look at Transformers and go... Dinobots are seeing lots of play because Dinobot decks are doing well in tournaments. Well, if every deck is unique, I don't know how we're going to track the meta. I don't know how that will work, though it is something that interests me greatly. And then there's going to be organized play. Now, it, we're not told much about organized play, unfortunately. We're told that it's going to be supported by the Fantasy Flight Games organized play and that there will be tournaments. It says that there's going to be more information on the website coming soon. Unfortunately, as it stands at the moment, there isn't much information. But we have here two reasons to suggest this game is being taken seriously. Reason number one, they're already planning organized play. You don't put organized play in for a game you're not taking seriously. Reason number two, there's seven factions and only three of them are in the first set. 
If they put three in the second set, that means it's going to be at least three sets until we can actually use all of the factions. I am incredibly excited about this game. I think this game looks really fun and really interesting. In terms of a release date, according to, and this is not, it, I don't know what to make about this, but when I googled it, I did see Cool Stuff Inc. have got a release date of November the 15th, except it actually says expected release November the 15th. The only other date I've been able to find is Q4 2018, so it's probably coming out in around about a month's time, but we don't know for certain. I've got it pre-ordered. I think it looks really good. Incidentally, the things you can pre-order at the moment, there is a starter set. Now, in the starter set, you actually get two pre-made defined decks, which are designed to help you to learn the game. And then you get two mystery decks, which no one knows what's in them. That's the whole point of the game. So you get two of those. And then you get all of the counters, etc., that you would expect to need to be able to play the game. You can also obviously buy the decks individually for about 10 bucks each. And then there's a whole bunch of playmats, weirdly enough, which are up for pre-order. The most exciting of which is the double-sided playmat, which is clearly designed to help you lay out the game. If anyone's wondering, I've pre-ordered the starter pack, because you get the learn-to-play decks, the counters, and two of your own decks, and the double-sided playmat. But honestly, I think two of these decks isn't going to be enough for me. I'm probably going to end up buying eight to ten in the very near future. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we know about Keyforge at the moment and what we don't. I think it looks like an incredibly interesting game, but I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Does this sound like fun? Could you get excited? And remember, if you want to play this game, you can buy in and get a competitive deck and everything you need for ten dollars if that's not a reason to try it i don't know what is go nuts in the comment section but please do remember the rule be nice and then make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel and follow me on twitter at the wassy where i talk about games kind of like this channel but you know much much smaller but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching wassy plays